In this video, I'm going to explain to you kind of a nifty quantum mechanics problem. You're probably used to taking the position and momentum operators in position space and then commuting them to get the famous quantum commutator satisfied by them. But you're probably not used to starting with the commutator and then reverse engineering the momentum operator from it in the position basis it turns out that you can actually do that, and I'm going to show you how. It's a problem that's kind of fun, and it's definitely worth knowing because it adds a dimension, a richness to your understanding of quantum mechanics. To see one more way in which you can relate the various famous mathematical structures within quantum mechanics. So here follows the math section. In operator, as opposed to path integral based quantum mechanics in the Schrodinger picture, there are really four basic mathematical structures that comprise the theory. These four things are the quantum wave equation, the Schrodinger equation in non-relativistic situations where spin doesn't matter, the operator values of physical quantities, the quantum commutators that these operators satisfy, and the generalized uncertainty principle. The generalized uncertainty principle, if you don't remember, says that the product of uncertainties associated with two different observables has a minimum, and it gives the specific value of that minimum. The punchline, though, is that it's proportional to the commutator of operators. It does tell you the specific value. Perhaps the statement makes it seem like it only tells you the proportionality. It does tell you the specific value of the minimum, but the punchline, and the reason why I only wrote that, is that it's proportional to the commutator of operators associated with the uncertainties whose product you're studying. That's the thing you ought to remember. It's not used here, but it's the important thing you need to remember. In a usual beginner quantum mechanics class, the approach that is taken is the following. Motivation for the Schrodinger equation is given, then the operator values of various observables are deduced from that. From here, the quantum commutators can then be found by commuting the operators. Finally, the generalized uncertainty principle can be derived from the operators and gives the product of uncertainties in terms of the quantum commutators. This approach works perfectly fine, but in many cases, there are other ways to relate these mathematical structures. In this particular case, we'll be reversing the way that two of them are usually related. Usually, you commute the operators to get the commutation relations. Here, we're going to start with the commutation relation and get one of the operators. We will derive the momentum operator and the position basis from the relevant quantum commutator. Specifically, if one chooses the position basis, one must choose the position operator x hat to just be the position x. With this, one can then use the xp quantum commutator to derive the momentum operator and the position basis. This is the opposite to the normal path taken. It is useful to know this different approach just as an extra dimension, an extra bit of richness to your understanding of quantum mechanics. So let's begin. The xp quantum commutator, of course, is just this specifically ih bar times the identity. We are looking for the position representation of the momentum operator. More specifically, this means that we are looking for an expression for the momentum operator that acts correctly on states in the position basis, where correctly means that its position basis expectation value actually is the average momentum. If we take the abstract momentum operator, the operator whose position representation we're trying to find, we know that the average momentum, the expectation value, takes this form. So what we're looking for is a way of expressing this momentum operator that allows us to, in the usual way, get the expectation value of the momentum operator correctly in the position basis. So we're used to these two formulas, which are really just the same thing, but in this one I've expressed the wave function in a fancy way and its complex conjugate. So basically the position representation of this abstract operator is the one we can stick in here with these position representation wave functions to get the true average of the momentum. If it doesn't give the true average of the momentum, then it's not the right representation of the momentum operator in the position basis. We know that this is the correct value given the way we've defined this operator and this notation. So what we're trying to find is what's the correct expression for it when we're writing it in the position basis like this. In order to work that out, we need first to extract another fact from this valid starting definition. What we can do is we can insert complete sets of states in between the operator and these states here. When we do that, we arrive here. Now we know that we're looking for an expression of this form, and that whatever value we have to make this px hat b in order to make it equal to this, and therefore this, is the correct one. But in order for this to have a chance of being equal to this, we need this relation to be true. 
specifically the reason why is because if we insert this value for this quantity that shows up there in and we can do the x prime integration given the delta function and that leaves this px hat behind and changes this x prime to an x so you see we need this relation to be true in order for these two things to be consistent we know this is right and we're trying to find a value of px hat that makes this right and this relationship being required is the first step to getting there. Of course, the ultimate key to finishing the process of deducing this will be using the commutator. That's fundamentally the physical relation we're deriving it from. So far, all we've technically done is played around with definitions and notation. The real physics is going to come from the quantum commutator. There is one more bit of mathematics that we need to sort out. Given the way we've defined the states, of course, we just have this relation, which means we can rewrite this equation here like this, and this will be useful later. So now we need to actually handle the commutator. We need to actually use it to extract the momentum operator. And here's where you see the cleverness of this problem. The momentum operator can be revealed by evaluating the position space matrix element of both sides of the commutator. So if we expand out the commutator, we write it out properly like this. We have this value between the matrices and we know what it's equal to. We just have the identity on the other side, and of course those pass through. So we arrive at this quantity here, and of course we remember that's just the delta function there. So then removing what's in between, we just have this relation. But then of course we can just distribute these ket and bra vectors, and we get these two quantities here. And we know, as stated above, what happens when we act these x operators on these x position states. We just get the value of the position, which of course is just an eigenvalue and can be pulled out. So then if we factor out these matrix elements of the momentum operator, then we arrive here. We can then divide by that to get this equation. But it's quite interesting. We actually see the derivative of the Dirac delta function showing up. It turns out that you can actually write a sensible derivative down. If you're not familiar with that, you can look up the identity, and if you want to, a derivation of it too. But it turns out this is just minus the derivative of the Dirac delta function times ih bar. So we can write it like that. But then we remember that this Dirac delta function can be re-expressed in terms of these position states like that. Okay, so then if we take out what's in the middle, we simply arrive at this relation from the commutators directly. However, remember when we were playing around with notation and definitions above, we arrived at this equation here. You can compare these two, and you find that in fact the position representation of the momentum operator is simply this familiar value. So that's how you basically solve out the quantum commutators in order to arrive at the value of the momentum operator in the position basis. It's a bit more complicated to go backwards like that, but it's really interesting. It's useful to know about this problem. It represents a deeper understanding of quantum mechanics if you also know this. So now you've seen how to derive the momentum operator directly from the commutators. It's a pretty cool mathematical derivation. I hope it enriched your knowledge of quantum mechanics you found it useful or interesting, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.